Okay, my name is Susan Downs and welcome to the Silicon Valley Health Institute. Uh, we're a nonprofit <coughs> organization where we aim to bring health information so to help us to go on the path toward optimal health. I mean, optimal health is not normal lab values because those lab values are determined by 95% of our very sick population. So we want to know how to go to optimal health and wellness and how to be proactive so we can go on that path. And we're all here to do that. Um, anyway, tonight we've got, uh, it's not Mike there, is it? Joshua Hellman. He's a Harvard trained board certified physician and he's licensed in 14 states. He embraces an integrative approach to health, wellness, medicine, and life. He has two degrees in biochemistry with an undergraduate from Harvard and a master's from Cambridge in the UK. His medical degree is from the Harvard Medical School and MIT. He's passionate about applying his biochemical knowledge to real world challenges. He's board certified in emergency medicine and lifestyle medicine. He served as an attending physician throughout his career and ultimately as the medical director for the Hippocratic, Hippocrates, Hippocrates Health Institute in Palm Beach, Florida. His clinical and research focus is on the following areas, regenerative medicine, wellness, environmental medicine, mold toxicity, and Lyme disease. He's always had a keen interest in fitness and living a healthy lifestyle. He naturally became self-educated regarding the medical benefits of nutritional wellness and the longevity benefits of exercise and various herbal medications, inspiring him to begin studying functional medicine and regenerative medicine with a desire to provide more holistic care for his patients. So welcome. We are very lucky to have you, and um, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Great. Thank thanks for that uh... Uh, in, great introduction, Susan, and let me share my screen and see if we can get this to work. Okay. All right, can everyone see the my screen? How to make aging optional? Yes. Y yes, cool. All right. Okay, so today, tonight, it's, it's nighttime for me. I'm in Florida, it's uh, 6 p.m. Tonight's talk is how to make aging optional. And as you heard, my name is Do Joshua Hellman, MD. My website's drjosh.com, drjosh.com. And can you all see the next slide? Yes. All right, great. So, and let me just tell you, you just heard a great bio about me. And so I'll quickly go through this. And yeah, I'm board certified in lifestyle medicine and emergency medicine. Okay, so much for me. So I like to start my presentations with the conclusion in case you all get bored or have something else to do. And uh, I, I find repetition also helps with learning. So here is my summary how to make aging optional. Eat plants. Yeah. Exercise. Mm -hmm. Avoid processed food. Mm -hmm. Reduce stress. Smart supplementation with NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide, and we'll go over that if you haven't heard of that, I'm, I'm sure the, the audience here, some of you are extremely knowledgeable about this topic. And for some of you, it's relatively new. And also nitric oxide, I recommend for most people. Fasting, I, I was attending at a fasting center for a couple of years, True North. I'm a big fan for reversing aging using fasting. Optimizing sleep, tracking your own health, Avoiding hospitals. <laughs> okay, so that, that's the summary. So uh, that's what I'm going to cover. So I have some disclaimers here. The first is this is not intended to be medical advice. Consult your own doctor before making any changes. If your own doctor doesn't feel comfortable with this or these topics, consider consulting with me. 
And this presentation is not endorsed by the FDA or the FTC. And here's a second disclaimer, I'm not being paid by the food industry. I'm not being paid by big sugar. I'm not being paid by big pharma. All right, so the first topic, and, and literally we could spend hours just on this topic is what type of diet should I eat if I want to reverse my biologic clock for longevity? And I, I propose, or I, I believe, and I'll show you some evidence, that being vegan, eat, eating plants and not eating animal products will increase your life expectancy. The details are through mTOR and we may get into that. All right, so, but here's, here's just one, one study that shows comparing the vegan to the non-vegan group. If you look at the death rate in this study, it was 73,000 uh, Adventists the death rate for the vegans 5.4 deaths per thousand person years is lower than 6.61. I think the difference is probably even higher, but that's what this study showed. Okay. So why, why, why is it that people who eat plants don't, you know, ha ha have a longer life expectancy? There are, there are a few reasons. One is people eat plants have a lower risk of heart disease. A vegan diet is often low in saturated fat and cholesterol, which can lower the risk of heart disease. The next point is plant-based diet can lower certain types of cancer. If you're eating plants, whole plants are rich in fiber, antioxidants, phytochemicals, all those things have been linked to a lower risk of certain types of cancers. Oh. Vegans tend to have lower rates of obesity compared to non-vegans. And, and again, obesity or being overweight is associated with related health problems. Vegans may have improved gut health, because, again, because of the high fiber in the diet, healthy gut microbiome that can reduce inflammation. And they also have better control of blood sugar from some of the studies that are out there, lower risk of type two diabetes. And I'll, I'll go back and say though, I, it took me years, literally years to go from a st standard American diet, eating lots of animal products to just eating plants. So I'm not making these statements with judgment. I mean, my, everyone is on their own journey. I'm just saying for me and, and based on the research, I think plants are the way to go. Um, and. And from an objective standpoint, people eat plants are exposed to much lower levels of toxins because the higher up you go in the food chain, you're exposed to higher and higher levels of toxins. So if you're eating at the top of the food chain, if you're eating milk and meat and eggs, they have much higher levels of toxins than if you're eating plants on the bottom of the food chain because of a concept called biomagnification. The toxin levels go up and up and up as you go up the food chain. So what are, when I say toxins, what am I talking about? Here, and here are some, not all, here are some of the toxins common in meat. Heavy metals, plastics, which many of them are obesogen, i.e. they cause obesity. Estrogens, pollutants like PCBs. Pesticides, endotoxins, new 5GC, heme iron, antibiotics, heterocyclic amines. It's the HCAs, these are like the blackened area of charred meat. You also have PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And you also in meat have advanced glycation end products. And TMAO. Okay, so where, if you go look back at this, for pesticides like dioxins, where, where do people get, get that from? This has got U, US government data, the EPA. The common sources are beef, dairy, milk, chicken, pork, fish, and egg. 
you can inhale some of these dioxins. There's a little bit in the soil, not much in the water. So I'm not saying if you just eat plants, you're going to get zero toxins. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying dose. If you're eating animal products, you're going to get a much higher dose of these fatty toxins. And the concerning things about many of them is their half-life in the, in the human body might be 10, 20, 30 years. So we're not just talking about what you ate today or last month. We're really talking about what you were even exposed to, depending on how old you are as a child or, or while you were in utero, uh, while your mom was pregnant. Okay, and then, so it would make sense that you are what you eat. Here's a French study from 2017. They compared the vegans to the non-vegans, and it makes sense if because vegans are not eating as much, they're eating food that has much lower levels of all these toxins. There's a factor of 10 difference, meaning the vegans had much lower levels of all these toxins, the, the furans, dioxins, PCBs, PDTs, things like that. And um, you know, let me just give you a specific example. I grew up in Los Angeles in California and um, they stopped the production of DDT in this country in the 1970s because they realized that uh, it, it caused cancer and metabolic problems. Unfortunately, just because they stopped making it, they're like, hey, what, 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 the, the center for manufacture of DDT happened to be Los Angeles. So they're like, hey, we've got all this chemical around. What are we going to do with it? Hey, why don't we just bury it in the ground? And, and they did. They buried some of it. But then they're like, ooh, wouldn't it be easier just to ship a lot of it out into the Pacific Ocean? And they did that. And they put them, the DDT, in, in these canisters and they threw them out um, into the Pacific Ocean between Los Angeles and Catalina Island. And they're like, they put it out there and they're like, ooh, these big barrels of DDT are, are floating on the water. That's not good. We need them to sink to the bottom. So then they got uh, an ax and they um, poked holes in these big canisters so that they would go to the bottom of the ocean right off of the shore of Los Angeles. And, and unfortunately, they're still there and they're still emitting this DDT. So th this, is an, and th this is not unique to Los Angeles. These chemicals are all over the world now, unfortunately, including forever chemicals, and we can talk about that. Okay, so how do these chemicals, these PCBs and other fatty chemicals build up in living organisms? It's through the, the food chain. There, there's bioaccumulation over time and biomagnification as you go up the food chain. And these PCBs and other chemicals remain stored in fatty tissues much more than in muscles or other body parts. And if you think, well, what, what tissues in your body are fatty? Well, you've got, if you're you know, you've got fat cells like me a little bit around the waist, but guess what else is fatty? Your brain, your brain's extremely fatty. And that's where many of these toxins go. All right, and this is just a picture of uh, showing biomagnification where, or bioaccumulation where you have in the seawater, these chemicals have very, very low levels, you know, 0. 0.00002. And then if you look at the, the plants in the water, they're eight. But if you go up to the fishes, 1 to 37, the birds that eat the fishes up to 110, and then the marine mammals, 160. So you can see if you're eating from the top of the food chain, you're getting a much higher dose than if you're eating plants. Not that you won't get any from the plants, but you you're want to lower your dose. Okay, so why, why are we even talking about this? Well, it turns out that many of these toxins promote aging, which is not good. Premature aging, I should say. So how can we make aging optional? Um, you know, even, even vegans, just because you're eating plants, if you're eating what, what I call crap, carbonated drinks, refined sugars, artificial foods, and processed foods, if you're eating this stuff, um, they're definitely not health promoting and they can be toxic. So I'm not saying everything that's 
from a plant is good, you want to be more whole, the more whole plant, the better, you know, if it's made, you want to eat plants, you don't want to eat food that's made in a, in a factory or a plant. All right, so you want to stop eating the artificial processed foods. And you also want to avoid adding salt, oil, and sugar. And one of the major reasons for that is all three of these things, salt, oil, and sugar, will do damage to your blood vessels, your endothelial cells. So, yeah, so, but the, the tough thing is if you're eating processed food or you eat out at restaurants, these are the three things that they will specifically add to your food, the salt, oil, and sugar, because our brains are trained to be addicted to this stuff. So, you know, just like it took me years to convert from eating, you know, traditional animal products to eating plants, it took me many years to cut the salt, oil, and sugar out of my diet. And, and if I if I make a mistake and eat something with a lot of oil or a lot of salt or less sugar, I just won't feel well. So, but it, again, it took me a long time to get to that, to that place. All right. So it is definitely possible to be unhealthy, an unhealthy vegan. All right. And this is uh, my son, Jason. This, 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 this is personal. This, this picture is from a dozen years ago and I mean, I feel bad. I was, what was I doing? I was feeding my son, my young son, processed food. And, and if you can look for me, like, you know, 12 years ago, my, my face was all puffy for that reason. I was, I, not only was I feeding my son that, I was eating that type of stuff too. And yeah, on, on the left, you can see I'm, I'm looking better. I'm feeling better. I have a lot more energy. So th this is personal. I, I was able to make this journey myself and want to share this with as many people as possible. Right, so how does added sugar cause aging? One way is that sugar spikes lead to increased insulin levels. Another is that the sugar will caramelize with protein in your body to produce these things that are um, toxic called AGEs or advanced glycation end products. So let's just take a, a, a pause here or what I'm about to share with you, if, if you told me this information just a few years ago, I'd say, you know what, this is science fiction. I wish it, I wish it was true, but it's not. What, what I'm gonna share with you is actually true. It didn't have to turn out this way, but it's, it's very exciting that we can actually reverse aging in humans. We can turn back the biologic clock. And not just for people, but we can also do it for pets. And I'm not, I'm not recommending we do this, but technology has really taken off. It is technologically possible today to clone people. You know, you can take your skin fibroblasts and then convert it to an egg and sperm cells and then fertilize and then implant to clone. So I, I don't think this research is being done in humans in the United States. But I have a funny feeling somewhere in the world there they are working on cloning people. So there are whole ethical, I'm not recommending we do this, but there are whole ethical problems or issues with this. But I don't think ethically there's anything wrong with turning back your own biologic clock or that, that of your pets. And I know some people might say, well, where's the proof? Where's the double-blind placebo-controlled study to prove everything I'm going to share with you? And, and I'll be upfront. I, there aren't a lot in humans of double-blind placebo-controlled studies because think about how long you need to do it to show that you can reverse aging. You know, for for decades and decades, you would you would it would take you know I don't know 50, 100 years to do good study, and by that time we're kind of not gonna be, we, we may not be around. So when it comes to longevity studies, I don't know about you, but I don't really wanna be in the control group that doesn't get any good treatment. All right, all right, so yeah. So wh why is this all important? The, what we're trying to do here is trick the body or hack the body to slow down aging and some people call it biohacking. And, and 
you know, would, would you want to wait 50 or 100 years until this is settled science? I don't think, well, some people will, but some people won't. And I'm, I'm in the group that, that I don't want to wait. So before I go on, let me, let me just look in the chat and see if uh, there are any, wow, we have a lot of comments here. Let me see if I can, is it okay if I just quickly cover some of these questions? All right. Yeah, please uh, address some of these. People are commenting because like salt, I mean, there's salts with more minerals and salt that don't have minerals. Meat, some of it's organic, some of it's not. Uh, general statements about oils. I mean, obviously the seed oils and the uh, vegetable oils are very, and the, uh, what it, grape seed oil, uh, canola oil are bad for us, but avocado oil and virgin olive oil and coconut oil might be good. So some people, I mean, I, I know, I mean, so some people, uh, you know, I mean, I, at some point you can fine tune this, but people are noticing that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll address that point right now, which is, it's true that coconut oil may be better than butter or some other, you know, rapeseed oils, et cetera. But even olive oil, if you do studies where you feed people olive oil and look at the function of their endothelial cells, they'll get damaged because what happens is when you eat a fatty meal, it doesn't matter what type of oil the, you are what you eat. So you eat the fatty meal, those fats go into after, after it gets digested in your stomach and intestines, they get absorbed into your bloodstream. And if you study, if you look at red blood cells after they're exposed to the fat or for that matter, fatty toxins that we were just talked about, those, those red blood cells will actually form spikes on the surface. And then those spikes will do damage to the endothelium, the lining of the blood vessels. So I think we could probably talk just about that topic. So again, I, I don't want to get bogged down on that point. And uh, I was kind of angry the first time I heard about this, but suffice it to say that a, um, um, a, a high oil, high fat diet is not health promoting despite what you may see in the popular press. And no, I'm, I'm not being paid by, by big broccoli. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, good. This is going to go on the website. Um, yes, they're, they're vaccinating, injecting the meat supply. That's not good. And there's a question, which is better organic grass fed versus poorly sourced meats? Unfortunately, from the data I've seen, the toxin level, the fatty toxin level, sometimes are even worse in the organic grass fed meats because they're often letting these animals grow longer and longer. So if you let an animal grow longer, that gives the animal more time to accumulate these toxins because they're still on the top of the food chain. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. Um, I was responsible for shipping DDT to India. That's fascinating. To India. Yeah. So this problem is not just in this country. We've, we've exported a lot of these problems to the world. Okay. Table salt, bad. Mineral salt, good. No. All added salt in general. Now, there, there are rarely, there, there are some people or are some patients out there who have extremely low levels of sodium or because of genetic abnormalities. So there are a few people out there, but the vast majority of people do not need to add salt to their diet. And just as I mentioned how, when you eat a fatty meal or have oil, it deforms red blood cells, a salty meal will do the same thing, um, not as badly. So it's, it's about half as bad as the oil, but it still does damage to blood vessels. So you do not need to add salt. But again, I know this goes against what you're going to hear in the popular press. It's just, if you look at the studies, you don't, and if you look at what our ancestors had, our ancestors di didn't have access, most of them, 
to salt to add to their food. So it's, it's an addiction and it's, it's an addiction you don't need to do. But if you're trying to get off salt or oil or sugar, like, like I know when I, when I got off of the, of the fats and the oils, I, I literally had a, a headache for like two weeks because it, it, it's a true addiction we're talking about. And someone says, you can't categorize all salts the same. Well, I do. <laughs> and, and I don't see anyone stopping me. All right. Um, seems like he's glossing over. Yes, I am glossing over the surface of these topics because the topic I want to cover today is longevity. I want to cover I, many ideas. I'm probably going to share, I don't know, 30, 40 ideas. And you don't have to do all of them. In fact, just start with one or two on how to um, promote longevity. So that, that's my purpose in speaking to you all and when I speak to the public. Um, he will drill down. Coconut, avocado, and olive oil are good. I disagree. They're, they're better than butter. They're better than rapeseed, but um, they are not health promoting in my book. And if, if you look at people who eat lots of coconuts on these tropical islands, most of them have bad blood vessel disease because coconut oil is high in saturated fat. Why is our body addicted to salt, oil, and sugar? Well, um, I think it's for survival, right? I mean, if, if, um, if our ancestors hadn't sought out and wanted high calorie dense foods, foods that are high in oil, fat, and sugar, then they wouldn't have survived to the next generation. I don't think it's, um, it's not a design flaw. It's just, we live in a different world. Unlike our ancestors, we, most of us have access to food 24 seven. And, you know, as opposed to our ancestors, they fasted a lot because often there was no access to food. It was not an option. Okay. Yes, the, the body does need salt and the place we should get our salt is from whole plants. There's, there definitely is salt in whole plants. Black Himalayan salt is better because of the sulfur. Sounds like marketing to me. I mean, I love Himalayan salts. They, they look beautiful, but you don't need to eat them in your diet. Nothing wrong with grass-fed butter except for the saturated fat. And even grass-fed butter is high in toxins and oxidized cholesterol, which is a toxin. I mean, if you, if you look at the data now on chronic disease in India, is going through the roof and it's correlated to their consumption of, of ghee and process, other processed foods. Ghee is where they take butter and they heat it to a high temperature. Butter has cholesterol. If you take cholesterol and heat it to a high temperature, you produce oxidized cholesterol. And we haven't been able to even measure oxidized cholesterol except for like the last 10 or 20 years. No one talks about it, but oxidized cholesterol will also damage um, damage cells and blood vessels. How do I keep healthy weight level with a vegan diet? You focus on eating low calorie dense foods, like most fruits, avocados are high calorie dense. Avocados have like 900 calories uh, per pound. So don't eat lots of avocados, eat mainly other fruits, plants, and whole grains. I think even grass-fed butter has new, new 5GC, it does. And um, grass-fed butter affects TMAO. Again, what, what many of us have heard is marketing. And I can find you lots of books that say, oh yeah, eat organic meat, eat grass-fed butter, eat your olive oil. And, and I'm here to say, those are not health promoting. They, you've, you've heard those messages because I think people are trying to sell you those products. What about all the glyphosate or Roundup in our soil? No mention of sourcing of plants or vegetables either. You're right, I can't cover everything, but I personally recommend organic, eating organic as much as you can. And the problem though is not only is glyphosate in the soil, now it's in the rainwater. And you know, if if you're, you know, the the 
the grass fed cows, well, guess what? They're, there's glyphosate in the rainwater that they're eating. So that's going to accumulate in you if you choose to eat um, the cows. Um, Self-defense. What about kefir in your diet? Okay, so I'm not, so kefir is fermented. I like that part, but many of the kefirs are from animal sources, which do not, uh, I, I don't recommend because of uh, their association with high toxin levels and hurting longevity. Now, now you can get kefir made out of coconut. Unfortunately, coconut is high in saturated fat. So I'm not a huge fan of kefir. Um, someone here likes the PH Miracle books from Dr. Young. Um, Let's see what else. Anna likes eating SOS free. That's awesome. And what about the Budwig diet? I, I'm not familiar with the Budwig diet. Why do most biohackers advocate for more consumption of clean source meats and fats? This is the first time I've heard a self proclaimed biohacker take a firm stance against these things. I think many of the biohackers biohack out there. Um, like Dave Asprey, et cetera, I think, I think they are addicted to clean or they're, they're addicted to meat. Um, but I also think that they are trying to, uh, what do you call it? I think they are trying to present something to the public that they're willing to do, right? Because if you take someone eating a standard American diet, and you say, I want you to cut out all salt, oil, and sugar, cut out all animal products, and just eat plants, most of them are not going to be able to do that. So I think one of the reasons is they're, they're trying to get people to do things to make changes slowly. Okay, please go back. I'm, I'll go back now. Sorry, sorry for the long diversion. All right. All right, so Queen Elizabeth II recently died. Does anyone there know what the cause of death was on her death certificate? I'm just curious. Old age. Did you say old age? <laughs> you are correct. All right, let's see it. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to zoom in here. And there it is, old age at the very bottom there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what in the world is old age? I guess it's considered normal aging. And no, that's not Queen Elizabeth, but yeah, as we get older, we, we can see it in our skin and our face. So what, what in the world is aging? Aging, this is, this is the dictionary definition. It's the progressive physiological changes in an organism that lead to Senescence. Okay, well, what is senescence? Senescence is a decline of biological functions and an organism's ability to adapt to metabolic stress. And okay, so how can we, so that's aging. How do we reverse it? And you may have heard the fountain of youth and people have been searching for the fountain of youth for centuries. You know, Ponce de Leon, I'm in Florida, Saint, I don't live in St. Augustine, I'm in Tampa, but St. Augustine supposedly had the fountain of youth. And if you go there today, you can actually find the fountain of youth. Okay, so, so what, how can, you, how can you promote wellness or longevity? And to me, it's a whole pyramid. You want, and you wanna work from the bottom up. You wanna work on nutrition, digestion, movement, metabolism, rest, manage your stress, reduce your toxicity, um, if you get sick, inform self-care. And then, only then, should you go to seek uh, proactive medical care. So, in my opinion, your goal should be to try to stay away from hospitals because not a lot of good things happen in hospitals. What are the five pillars of metabolic health? They are... Sorry about that. Healthy eating, daily movement, healthy connections, 
managing your stress and smart supplementation. And Susan, you, you raised this in the beginning. You do not want to be average because the average American or most Western countries are not healthy. In fact, only 6.8% of the US adult population have optimal cardiometabolic health. And this study was done before COVID. I bet you this number is even lower now. So if you actually have optimal cardiometabolic health, which promotes longevity, you are not normal. You are abnormal. So if you're looking lab, lab tests or other things, please don't compare yourself to the average unhealthy American. Met, and why am I talking about metabolic health? Because metabolic health and biologic age are inseparable. from the song, The Who, My Generation. Hope I die before I get old. Yeah, well, I, I just hope I don't get old. I hope, uh, so, so what in the world is getting old? There's a concept of health span versus lifespan. Lifespan is how many years you live. Health span is how healthy you are. So I think many of us would agree there's really no point in extending your lifespan if the last 1, 10, 20, 30 years, you're a vegetable in a nursing home, for example, who, with, who, who doesn't really understand the environment. My goal for, for you all is not just to expand your lifespan, but also your health span. And why is it that people start their, their health declines? One reason is NAD, which is a, a molecule, which is the precursor. NAD is found in your mitochondria in every cell. It's required for life. And we'll talk about NMN, which gets converted to NAD. The same thing is true of nitric oxide. That's why I think most people over the age of 25 should be supplementing with NMN and nitric oxide. And we'll get into that, but as your NAD and nitric oxide go down, your metabolic function decline. And it also turns out, and it didn't have to be this way, from yeast to plants, to dogs, to cats, to us, your metabolism is linked to aging. If you can slow if you can slow the metabolism, you can also turn back the biologic clock. So NAD or NAD plus stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide found in mitochondria. Your, your cells cannot live without NAD. It's a critical coenzyme for the production of energy. It's found in every cell. So this is the new paradigm I'm recommending. Most doctors are not studying or practicing longevity medicine. This is not what I learned in medical school. What I learned in medical school was how to, once you already have a disease, we learned how to try to treat that disease. We didn't really learn how to prevent the disease. And um, doctors are not needed for most of this movement unless they're willing to pivot. Because guess what? Most doctors haven't been taught this new paradigm of longevity medicine. And you're going to see a lot. I mean, there's definitely interest on, on the part of some physicians. I, I just got back from my... Harvard Med School 30 year reunion. And I gave a quick presentation on this and many of my classmates were interested, but they were interested basically as an outsider, they hadn't heard this before. So if, guess what? If, if well-informed physicians haven't heard about this, you know, a, a lot of the public won't have heard about this either. The problem or the issue is traditional medicine is focused 
on only treating you once you have a disease, not prevention. So the, it's a completely different model. And if we were to be able to prevent disease in the disease model, um, it would devastate hospitals and, and the current financial system. So that's why I'm, I'm going directly to the general public because I think that's where I can do the most good. So one of the keys is exercise. Regular physical activity can help you in many different ways throughout your day. It can prolong your lifespan and your health span. And when I say exercise, I mean, do some aerobic exercise where you increase your heart rate and you actually sweat. That includes high intensity interval training or HIIT training. You also should be doing some type of muscle building or strength training. Balance, you need to work on your balance because frankly, one of the dangers for people as they get older is falling and getting a hip fracture or another type of fractured bone. Hip fracture in the elderly has a 50% mortality after a year. So if you work on your balance, you're less likely to get a hip fracture. If you work on building muscles, you're less likely to get a hip fracture. So imagine if it wasn't acceptable to say, you know what, you're getting old, just live with that disease or pain. Aging, as we're talking about it now, is really a recent problem. Our ancestors were more likely to die from infection, trauma, starvation than from old age. So the philosophy of longevity medicine is that prevention is a smarter approach than the existing disease care system. Here's one example. Why don't we work on catching cancer early? Why don't we develop a blood test that can tell us if you've got a bad type of cancer in your body? Because I've yet to run into a type of cancer where the results are better the later you get diagnosed. So here's an example. There's something called the GRAIL or GLARI multi-cancer early detection blood test where you, you do, a, I, I did this on myself. You, you, you submit a blood specimen and they test you for like 53 different types of cancer. And, and uh, it, took, it took a couple of weeks, but I was happy to find out that I didn't have any of those cancers. But you know what, if I did, I'd wanna know it now and not you know two or three years from now when it'd be a lot harder to treat. So yeah, insurance, guess what? Medical insurance in, this, in the United States will not cover this. Surprise, surprise. I'd argue even if your insurance doesn't cover it, it's, it's, worth, it's worth paying the money to get it done. Either, you know, pay me now or pay me later. I'd rather pay you now. Cancer is easier, easier to treat if caught early. And then, but the disease model that we have in the United States is you wait until you actually have the cancer diagnosis and then you figure out treatment. You don't try to catch it early. All right, so it turns out that the top chronic diseases are all caused by aging. Things like heart attack, stroke, dementia, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, and, and many others. So the point is, if we can turn back or stop aging, we can prevent you from getting all these bad diseases. I don't know, what, what do people think? Isn't that a better model? <laughs> let, let me uh, pause again a little bit just to see some questions.
Okay. We'll keep going on. All right. So it turns out that there, there are many different types of biological age clocks. Well, one, one easy way is just you, and this has actually been correlated. You look at someone's face and you can say, oh, you look old or you look young. But here are five different types. One is looking at telomeres, which are the very ends of chromosomes. There's epigenetics, where you look at modifications like methyl groups on the DNA. You can look at the transcriptomics, which is the whole blood RNA. You can look at proteomics, the different types of proteins to, to measure aging. And you can also measure metabolites, metalobolics. But the cool thing is all, with all these different investigations, and, and this whole field is only like 10 years old. But when you look at this, with all these, there's, it's a clock. There, there's a correlation. You can, you can look at someone's epigenetics. You can look at someone's different proteins and you can, just from this graph, you can say, oh, you're, you're looking old. The other thing is estimating biologic age Different tissues age at different rates. And the exciting thing is you can reset the biologic clock. There, there are different levels. There is level one. So for example, which changes transcription factors. For example, if you go hungry, like skipping breakfast or fasting or, or exercise, that, that will reset your biolog biologic clock a little bit. Level two is if you take a supplement like NMN or metformin, which is a prescription drug, or nitric oxide, you can affect the sirtuins, and we'll talk about that in a second, that, um, that will reset the clock. And then level three, which isn't available yet, is where you can permanently reset your DNA master aging clock. But there's a lot of research on this, and I predict just based on exponentially how quickly this is going, that within three, five, seven years, we'll be able to re reverse aging in humans um, permanently. All right, so when I talk about epigenetics, you've got your genome, you've got the DNA and the, the epigenetics is you have methyl groups, which are carbon and three hydrogens or other groups that are placed on the DNA that change the gene expression. And what I find amazing is the same methylation biologic clock in humans and dogs and other animals. This is conserved from yeast to plants, to dogs, to humans. It didn't have to turn out that way, but that's the way it works. So. And I think that's one of the reasons why there's all these advances being made is because you can actually look at animal models and it works in humans. So, so yes, different, different organs in your body age at different rates. For example, the brain ages more slowly than the skin. And you may say like, well, why is that? Well, the brain is protected in a bony cage, is not exposed to as much cosmic or ultraviolet radiation than the skin is, for example. So how can we measure aging? Hold on, Mark. My picture is gone. Can uh, someone, I, I, I'm hearing some feedback. Okay. They were all muted when they came in. Okay. Okay. I, I, okay, I just muted uh, Fauzi. I think that was who it was. All right. All right. So how can we measure aging? You can, like I mentioned, you can look at someone's face and say, oh, you look, you look like you're 30, you look like you're 80, you know, et cetera. Um, you can do blood tests to, to measure the aging. You can look at DNA methylation. You can look at the telomere length, the length of, of, of the chromosomes, of the, the, the very end of the chromosome is called the telomere and longer is better. 
meaning uh, younger. Um, and I'm, I'm working with a Taiwanese company called mywellnessreader.com. And we're actually using a camera to look at someone's face, not just, you know, say, oh, you look old or young, but to measure the reflection from the face, so from some of the cells. So the exciting thing is there, there, there are all these different ways you can measure it. In, if you want to pay someone, there, there are companies like Inside Tracker that'll do it for you. There's also a complimentary one called Glycan Age, measuring the your age by measuring glycos, glycanization, the, the adding of glucose groups to different molecules in your body. All right, so how do cells measure energy and defend against aging? And this is fascinating. There are three internal monitoring systems. You can tell I've got two degrees in biochemistry. I love this stuff. I'm not going to quiz you at the end, but I think it, it's important for you to at least hear these three systems. One is called AMPK that measures glucose and ATP levels. The next is called mTOR. If you have, it measures how much animal protein you have in your diet, less is better. And th this is one of the reasons I recommend people limit their animal protein intake because that will um, stimulate mTOR, which in turn will promote aging. And then fasting, the more you fast, that will also help reverse biologic age. And then finally, sirtuins. Sirtuins are molecules in your cells that control the, how the DNA is wound up, which affects how the, it's methylated and expressed. And the sirtuins measure the NAD levels and also adversity. So it turns out that there are three systems that are responsible for reversing the biologic clock. They're all related to energy, AMP, AMPK, mTOR, and sirtuins. All right. And the reason I'm very excited about both nitric oxide and NMN or NAD is they both activate all three of these pathways. And they both go down as we get older. So that's why I recommend supplementing both of those if you're over the age of 25. Okay. AMPK, mTOR, and sirtuins. And I apologize for the slow animations. It turns out biochemically, fasting has almost identical biochemical effects as exercise. So how is this AMPK stimulated? Hunger, exercise, and a prescription drug called metformin or, and or a supplement that you don't need a prescription for, call for called berberine. So here's some of the key targets to prolong your lifespan and your health span. Your blood vessels, your mitochondria, the three energy pathways I just mentioned. You also want to reduce what are called zombie cells. These are senescent cells, and there are supplements called senolytics that will reduce the zombie cells. You also want to stimulate stem cells. You can do that with exercising or fasting. When you end a fast, your body starts um, repairing itself. And one of the things it does is it releases your own stem cells. You also want to reduce toxins because toxins shorten your lifespan and health span. And then hormesis is the concept that anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So it's not the case that in order to live a long life and be happy, all you have to do is stay at home and sit in a chair and watch TV. No, our bodies were not designed to sit and to not have any stress whatsoever. We're designed to be active. So the mitochondria is in almost every cell. It's, it's where the energy is produced. And the health of your cells is 
especially for energy production, is how many of these mitochondria you have. To optimize the mitochondria, you want to do things like take supplements like ALA, alpha lipoic acid, CoQ10, NAD, NMN, nitric oxide, and then also hormesis. And some examples of hormesis are going from a, a sauna to a cold plunge to a sauna to a cold plunge. A, another example is exercising with low oxygen and then exercising with high oxygen. It's, it's um, stressing the body. Smart supplementation, I am a fan of. Basically hacking this whole system. I believe, again, to summarize, if you're going to start someplace, I call this the fountain of youth. There are two ends in fountain. And there's N starts with NMN and N NO, which is nitric oxide. I am not a fan of caffeine because caffeine inhibits the production of nitric oxide. As I mentioned, zombie cells or senescent cells lose their identity and their epigenetic packaging. They stop dividing, but these zombie cells start releasing inflammatory signals and they cause inflammation and aging. So we want to get rid of our zombie cells with something called a senolytic that will kill the zombie cells. This is the one I use called qualia senolytic. Um, if you want more information about it, you can go to my website, which is drjosh.com, drjosh.com. The main ingredient of this is fisetin and quercetin in high doses. What you do is you take a high dose one day or, or, or one evening, and then uh, 24 hours later, you take the second dose and you can do that once a month. Again, this is based on research. This is, there aren't, you know, double blind placebo control studies in humans yet, but this is one of the biohacking things that I've chosen to do. Uh, eat whole plants, avoid processed foods. Adversity mimetics are good. What do I mean by adversity mimetic? Exercise. Um, and abundance mimetics, are, or mimetic just means imitating abundance. We, we were not designed to, you know, stuff our face with high calorie food three or five or 10 times a day. Uh, what happens if you just spend all your time sitting and, and not exercising and eating high calorie dense foods, your body becomes complacent. The repair systems become complacent and you age more quickly. One of the things that you want is something called autophagy, which is where the body gets rid of deformed proteins. They basically, auto means self and phagi means eat. It, the body eat, takes, gets rid of the bad, deformed, old proteins so that new ones can be produced. Autophagy is stimulated by adversity mimetics like by fasting. Another concept for longevity is called xenohormesis. Eat food that's stressed. An example of this are if you eat foods that are from uh, greenhouses, hydroponics. Guess what? Hydroponics, the, the plants are stressed. The plant's response to that stress is to put more antioxidants into that food that in the plants that in turn that you will eat. So yes, eat food that's stressed. Okay, and because this technology is rapidly advancing, your goal, I believe, if you wanna have a long, healthy life, is to live long enough to reset your biological clock as the technology advances. What am I talking about? In 2012, something called the Yamanaka factors, OS and K won the Nobel Prize. So that's just 11 years ago. That's the reset button. This, this is new, relatively new information. Uh, Dr. Horvath at UCLA showed that 
you can actually reverse your biologic clock by two years. And in that study, he used the prescription drugs, metformin, and then growth hormone and DHEA. And you might say, well, yeah, Dr. Josh, that's interesting. Dr. Horvath was able to reset the biologic clock in humans by two years, but yeah, two years, what's the big deal? No, 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 you don't understand. Subsequent research has shown you can reverse your, your biologic clock by two years, and then you can do it again, and then you can do it again. So you can choose to prolong your life as long as you want. Obviously, there are no guarantees here, but I find this whole field extremely exciting. And one data source said that for every year you stay alive, you get an extra three months due to the advancing technology. But because this is growing exponentially, soon you'll get an extra year for every year you stay alive. Now, I've, I've, I've shown this presentation. Some people and they're like, you know what, Dr. Josh, I'm 80, I'm happy. I don't want to do anything, you know, just let, let me, let me die. And, you know, it's like, hey, you know, as long as they understand this is an option, that's fine. But if you're interested, why not give it a try? And just to understand, like, there are billions of dollars in Silicon Valley and other places being poured into this whole field. Jeff Bezos from Amazon has Altos. And Dr. Horvath, who was at UCLA, he left UCLA. He's now joined a private company called Altos. So because there's all this money flowing into this field, that's why I'm optimistic. We're going to see some great advances soon. And give me one second. You have uh, Dr. David Sinclair at Harvard Medical School, who's come up with the information theory of aging, that basically aging is the loss of epigenetic information. And fortunately, it's reversible. So somewhere in the cell, we don't know yet, somewhere in the cell, the fountain of youth is there and it can be triggered to come, to come back. There is somehow a backup copy of the youthful epigenetic information that, that we can use to rejuvenate ourselves. So how in the world can you increase your NAD levels? A supplement called NMN or nicotinamide mononucleotide. This is what it looks like. This is the nicotinamide part. And this is the mononucleotide part. You have a ribose sugar, you've got a phosphate group. So some of the supplements I, I like NMN, I also like berberine. I take metformin, which is a prescription drug for reducing blood sugar. I'm not a diabetic. Now I'm not recommending everyone take metformin, but you know, after you talk to your doctor, I take it on the days I don't work out because there have been studies in humans showing that metformin does not help with muscle production. It, it prevents it. So on the day, on the few days I don't work out, I'll, I'll take metformin. All right. And you might say NMN. I'm saying NMN. I'm not saying M&Ms. M&Ms are not health promoting. They're high in salt, oil, and sugar. Um, do not eat M&Ms. I'm talking about a supplement called NMN. Okay. There are other fields or other subsets in regenerative medicine. There are stem cells that, that I mentioned. There are also something called exosomes that stem cells produce that might have 500 different regenerative peptides. Stress. Well, too much stress can be a bad thing, but we all need a little bit of stress. Again, it's hormesis. What, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We want to reduce the bad stress <coughs> and activate the good stress. Regular relaxation or meditation cuts in half the risk of obesity. And 
I, I don't care what type of relaxation you do. It could be meditation, yoga, breathing, Qigong, Tai Chi. To me, it doesn't matter, or prayer, it doesn't matter what you're doing, but do something. So what are some of the ways to reduce stress? Meditation, breath work, exercise, laughing, connecting to others, which is kind of what we're doing here. I mean, I wish this was in person, but uh, you know, we're all we're all here looking at these slides and, and talking. Okay, we're listening. Yoga, listening or playing music, having self compassion, supplements like magnesium, epigenin. I'm a fan of lavender essential oil. Keeping a journal, getting enough sleep. Guess what? Meditation can prolong life. There's a 2006 study that showed that meditation reduces death rates by 23%, plus a 30% reduction in rates from cardiovascular disease and a 49% reduction from cancer. So do it. Um, lots of products. I use something here called here called BrainTap. You don't need to, you do not need to purchase a product to do this. I just find um, the, the binaural music and, and you can find binaural beats uh, on YouTube for free. You don't have to buy a product. Uh, I'm a big fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. He, he, his philosophy of breath work, he measures the brain activity and the heart coherence, correlates the two. And I'm not allowed to put this on my website, but I am allowed to, uh, this is a 20% off discount for Dr. Joe Dispenza. So take a picture of this if you want this, because he won't let me put this on my website. So give you a second. Okay, uh, sleep. You want to maximize your sleep, and what some of the ways to do that are to optimize your levels of serotonin. A good level of serotonin is about 400 to 600 on a urine test, and you also want to optimize your levels of 5-HTP, which is a precursor to serotonin. 5-HTP is a supplement you can take that gets converted to serotonin. Optimism. Yeah, it turns out that people who are optimistic live longer. So I think that may be a good reason to be optimistic. And um, the reverse is true. People are, who live longer are also opt more optimistic. Okay. This is a slide just um, showing that as we get older, our nitric oxide levels go down. And that's on the bottom, goes down from 100% level down to 15%. As our nitric oxide levels go down, we get more and more deposits and nitric oxide opens up blood vessels. So for all these reasons, I recommend, you know, if you're, if you're older than 25, you, you want to start looking at nitric oxide as a supplement. Where can you get nitric oxide? Eating green leafy vegetables, which is great. Chew, there, there's a production of nitric oxide in the mouth and also the gut. They're two different pathways. So if you've got leafy greens or beets, you want to chew them before you swallow to, to maximize the production. The problem or the issue is the when you chew leafy greens, you're only um, the nitric oxide produced will only last for like four hours. That's why I like a, a supplement like Cardio Miracle that is designed to last 24 to 36 hours. But I recommend both. Chew your leafy green, chew your leafy greens, but also take take a supplement like uh, Cardio Miracle. And you can find out more about that on, on my website, drjosh.com. Yeah, here it is. The discount code is Dr. Josh, D-R-J-O-S-H. It's got maybe 53 different um, components to it. <clears throat> In terms of blood vessel health is key for longevity. I also like a supplement called Endocalyx Pro because for many people, their glycocalyx, which is a buffering system of 
your capillaries and the small lymphatics get damaged as we get older, this is a way to rejuvenate it. And again, I'm not recommending you, you go out and you do all 30 or 40 of these recommendations I'm making at the same time. Do it one at a time. <clears throat> this Endocaux Pro keeps blood vessels slick, smooth, and protected. Um, okay. Helps with blood flow. Okay. I am a fan of a supplement called N acetylcysteine, which gets converted in the body to glutathione, which is the master detoxifier, because we know that toxins promote aging. So if you increase your level of NAC, you can increase your level of glutathione, and then you can help your body re reduce its toxin level. Uh, I'm a big fan of light, and I can't seem to get these slides to work. Yeah, and I see a comment, um, drinking water out of plastic bottles is not healthy. Just so not, I'm drinking out of a glass bottle, so. But yes, I've, I've used plastic in a pinch, but yeah, I'm not a fan of plastic. All right, let me go back, see if I can go back to this slide. Yeah, so I, I'm involved with a company called photonhealingroom.com, but you don't have to go there. There are, there are many different ways to get light therapy, photonic energy. Um, and this is the startup from Taiwan called My Wellness Reader. It's in startup phases, but the really cool thing is we'll be able to measure your health, your vital signs, your mineral levels, just through the camera on your computer or your phone. And that, that would be a whole other discussion, but um, okay. I'm also a big fan of a 15 carbon fat supplement called Penta Decanoic Acid because it binds to these nuclear receptors to optimize metabolism and increase your basal metabolic rate and decrease fat storage. It's called C15. Okay. Yeah. You can, for more information about many of these things, go to Dr. Josh, drjosh.com. And it looks like Ryan is raising his hand. So, Ryan, why don't I, um, why don't I see? You should finish your presentation, then I'll ask a question. Okay. I will finish it. Yeah. So, some of the many, we talked about Cardio Miracle, which is for nitric oxide. The Qualia Senolytic is to remove the zombie cells. NAC is to improve your glutathione detoxification. Endocalyx Pro is to improve your blood vessels. MetaPower, I didn't even talk about, is an essential oil blend designed to prevent fat cells from growing larger and to increase your metabolic rate. Uh, fatty 15, I mentioned, photon healing, I mentioned. Yes, you don't want to go to hospitals. Hospitals are where bad things happen. Community, yes. we. For those of you who, who hear this and want to do this, I strongly recommend that you find other people because it's, it's a lot easier to do if you're not trying to do this by yourself. Um, and Ideally, I'd like to find or, or start a whole community of people who are interested in doing what, what I described. Um, if there are any real estate developers out there, please get in contact with me. Uh, one, one of my classmates from, from Harvard wants to set up basically a, a community, a structure for baby, boom, baby boomers who are interested in longevity in the future. All right, so in summary, how can I make aging optional? Here's what you need to do. Eat plants, exercise. Avoid processed food. Reduce your stress. Supplement intelligently with NMN and nitric oxide. 
fast, optimize your sleep, track your own health, avoid hospitals. Find or form a community of other people who are interested in doing this. And it sounds like this is, a, this is one of those communities. Here's my contact information. And yeah, probably the easiest way to reach me is drjosh.com, drjosh.com, or email is drjosh at drjosh.com. Okay. And then where can you hear me in the future? I'm gonna be at a veg fest in Southern California, September 23rd of this year, 2023. And I'm also doing an online summit on reversing dementia in November of this year, 2023. So look out for that. I can do consults. And if you have a group that wants to hear this message, invite me and I'd be happy to speak to your group. And here's a QR code if you're into QR codes that has some of my information. And I'll give that a few seconds. If you want to take a photo and I can talk a little bit about essential oils that decrease fat storage. This is kind of a little bonus information and in increased metabolic rate. Things like grapefruit, essential oil, lemon, peppermint, ginger, and cinnamon in the right in the right concentration can can optimize your metabolism and yeah the, the, the one i use is called metapower and i can get you more information if you want on that okay um metabolic blend to decrease your sugar level assist is the one that has um, NMN, but there are other ways to get NMN. And this is the discount. We already went over the summary. Sorry about that. Almost done. Okay, let's, let's go to questions. Now. Yeah, so nitric oxide technically is a free radical. I mean, if you it's a gas. It's it's one nitrogen and one oxygen atom stuck together. And if you look at the number of electrons, yes, there is a free radical. But the interesting thing about nitric oxide is it's also an antioxidant. It's also a hormone, and it's part of normal human physiology. So, as an example, nitric oxide, the the body in white blood cells will combine nitric oxide NO with oxygen, which is O2, and produce a molecule called O-N-O, -O, -O -O, which the white blood cells will use to destroy bacteria. So yes, and, and they're using it for the free radical uh, purpose. So you have to understand, because we're, we're talking at such a small level, just one nitrogen and one oxygen atom together, it has lots of different properties. And you know, we, we've evolved to use it in, in so many different ways. The, the, I think the most important way is nitric oxide opens up blood vessels. Whether you uh, look at lab tests before deciding whether to supplement, for instance, you talked about NAC uh, increasing glutathione, but if a person has sufficient glutathione levels, wouldn't supplementing with NAC over time change their body's metabolism so they no longer produce enough glutathione? All right, so Ryan, how do you measure someone's glutathione levels? Mm, the spectra cell micronutrient test has that uh, factor in it. So the spectra cell micronutrient test will look at the glutathione levels in your red blood cells, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's a blood but, test. But, yeah, but unfortunately, when, when you're talking about detoxification, that goes on not just in your red blood cells. That hopefully that goes on in your liver, in your brain, throughout your whole body. So 
I'm not sure, I don't know if it's been studied that, I mean, you could have adequate glutathione levels in your red blood cells, but inadequate levels in your liver or your brain. So, I, I mean, clinically, I don't normally check glutathione levels. I'm, I'm not opposed to it, but I find, Ryan, that because we're in, in our so-called modern society, we're exposed to all these man-made chemicals that are toxic, that even the healthiest of us are still have a very high burden. And that's why I recommend most people supplement with NAC. Oh, okay. On, on metformin, um, you know, which I'm, I'm sort of paranoid about things that inhibit, you know, body's functions. And I guess metformin inhibits the liver's ability to release glucose into the bloodstream. So the, the question with metformin for me is uh, whether there's a way to take it that's beneficial without having the sort of side effects of reducing testosterone and uh, redu you know, and, and, and mimicking the effects of over-exercising and things like that. Uh, and you talked about taking it like every other day. Um, no, 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 no. I, I talked about taking on the days you don't exercise. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you, if you exercise every day, I, I probably wouldn't take it. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. But, 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 but Ryan, this is an example where, you know, there, there are studies in animals that metformin prolongs life. There aren't a lot of good studies yet in humans and the ones that, that are there, you know, there's, there's some benefit and there's some potential muscle breakdown, which, mm. which is why th this is a compromise I've made, but I, I'm just being perfectly out there. The, the final data is not out there, but I'm, I'm not willing to wait, you know, five, 10, 15 years for that final data to be out. I, I want to take action today, but, but I, I totally, I totally respect if you want to wait. Are there blood markers you use to determine whether you should be taking metformin or not? There can be. One of the things you can look is at your blood glucose levels. And you can get a continuous glucose monitor. You know, we're, we're going to have this new thing with light. So you can basically look at the camera every so often. But I recommend that you know, you know, where your sugars are. And I guess if you have... The key is you don't want lots of spikes. And if you know that your sugar is not spiking a lot, I'd respect that, you know, you don't want to do metformin or maybe you want to do berberine and not metformin. This is, this is a personalized decision between you and, and your, your physician. Unfortunately, most physicians are not willing to have this conversation yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are. <laughs> All right. Thank but, you. Look, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> one of them which i got from uh, a meeting at the you know of this group when it actually met in person over in silicon valley great okay so it sounds like i'm in the right group <laughs> that's good all right so let's go to the next uh question um what about the new study on taurine reversing aging by 10 years for men and 12 years for women. Yes, I am a fan of taurine. Taurine is an amino acid that stabilizes the nervous system in your brain. It calms it. What, one way that people may be exposed to taurine is in a beverage that I don't recommend people drink called Red Bull. They, they basically added taurine to the caffeine in Red Bull so that fewer people would be having side effects from the high doses of caffeine and other stimulants. But uh, I, yes, I am a fan to adding taurine uh, to your diet or, or supplement, I should say. Um, are there any downsides to taking berberine? Yes, uh, like any other supplement, there, there can be downsides. If you're already on, let's say you're a diabetic and you're taking diabetes medications, you don't necessarily want to take berberine because that could lower your blood sugar too much. Uh, a yoga study showed that stem cells can be stimulated. Doesn't surprise me. That's awesome. Um, infrared 
therapy on the tibia and hips and ribs stimulates stem cells. That's amazing. That's cool. Um, all the supplements could cause problems with the liver and kidney, especially with um, the fatty liver. And, and the answer is yes. Not, not just with the fatty liver. Guess what? If, if you, um, what do you call it? Many of us have toxins and infections trapped in a structure in our body, in the blood, in our brain, and other tissues called biofilm. Biofilm is a biologic film. So it's very possible that we give you supplements that improve your the cells in your body, including your immune system. And now your immune system is able to, to fight the bugs, bust the biofilm, and it releases these toxins. That's why I don't recommend you do this by yourself. I recommend you do this with a physician who can check liver function tests and other tests and make sure you're not hurting your liver or other or kidneys or other organs while you're uh, doing this. And yes, my website is drjoshdrjosh.com. Uh, how often do I recommend fasting as a preventative medicine to induce autophagy? To me, fasting and exercise are as much as you can do. I mean, you don't want to overdo it, right? You can overdo fasting and it turns into starvation. You can overdo exercise and, you know, run four hours a day. Uh, I don't recommend that. Um, so whatever fits into your lifestyle and don't, don't go from zero fasting to, you know, a huge fast unsupervised, same thing. Don't go from a couch potato to I'm going to run a marathon next month. No, you pace yourself. So uh, to me, with both exercise and fasting, you get better with time the more you do it. So if you're not on the journey, start doing it. And if you're on the journey, um, your body will tell you. Uh, what are some examples of hydroponic foods? So, um, so an example would be to get lettuce, to grow lettuce in a greenhouse with a hydroponic, you know, water irrigation system uh, where, you know, you're not, you're, not, you're not growing it in the soil outside, you're actually growing it in a greenhouse. And that abnormal environment will stress it in the lettuce you eat will actually have more antioxidants. My perspective on organ meats, I'm not a fan because uh, of the toxins that will accumulate in meat, including organ meats. Uh, livers from cows and other animals used for their flesh. Um, okay, this is interesting. Thanks, Anna. Wow, the, the first world living longer has more responsibility with the privilege. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a we could we could talk for hours just on the whole um, privilege topic. Um, and again, I apologize. I, I do not know what the Budwig diet is. Um, what about the metformin linked to B12 malabsorption? Uh, that that does exist, and the antidote I believe to that is to check your B12 levels. Many people are are deficient in B12 B12 levels. Whether you're vegan, carnivore, I see a lot of B12 deficiency because just because you take supplements or vitamins like B12 doesn't mean your body absorbs it. In the case of B12, you need something called an intrinsic factor. You may have it, you may not. I recommend periodically you check blood levels, make sure you actually have good B12 and vitamin D for that matter. Um, someone thinks metformin is so toxic and poisonous, lots of published studies showing it caused damage, depletes. Um, you know, I, I, I beg to differ, but um, you know, if, if, if you think metformin is so toxic, don't take it until, I would say the final information is not in. Um, and, but I, I'm, I'm not offended if you don't take it. Um, all right, we have a couple of people here with brain tap. Drinking water out of plastic bottles is not healthy. I agree. This is silicon and glass, um, which I think is fine. Thoughts on beet powder for nitric oxide supplementation. Beet powder by itself will help, but again, will only last for six hours. Normally, you want something like Cardio Miracle that has 50 different things put together so that you have a long term nitric ox oxide supplementation you know, 24 or 36 hours. Arugula is the highest food source of nitric oxide. I agree with that. 
the problem is I don't want, I love arugula. I just don't want to be waking up at midnight to be eating my arugula to optimize my health. Can you talk more about diets? I got a friend who started a carnivore diet after go, doing keto and claimed that they feel better than ever. You know, they probably do. Um, many people in our society have gut problems and a carnivore diet can clean out some of the gut problems. The problem with the carnivore diet or keto is long-term. It's very tough on your liver and kidneys. And uh, for that reason, I, I've yet to see any studies that that it reverses heart disease, but stay tuned. Uh, um, but I think unfortunately, uh, the carnivore diet and the keto diets are being over promoted. Um, but that, that's, that would be a whole other lecture. Um, Cardio Miracle is on, on the website. Yeah, you can find it on drjosh.com, drjosh.com. Uh, Arteracil, I am a fan of too. That's another uh, supplement that will open up um, that will open up blood vessels. Uh, how do we get the link to the recording? I'm not sure. Um, oh, wow. Pro, ProPublica recent new, newsletter said even our athletic wear has BPA. Yes, unfortunately, our clothes, most of our clothes have toxins. Toxins are everywhere. I would I would assume whatever products you're buying, whether they're home care products, clothes, in our so-called modern society, these, they're deadly conveniences and they're not good. Um, so um, yeah, that's one reason why we need detoxification. Uh, looks like the website, the website SVI, I'm sorry, svhi.com will have this recording. Um, I like this. The first law of 22 non-negotiable laws of the health book is to avoid hospitals and doctors. Yeah, I, I second that. Um, what is the dose for single nutrients of NMN and nitric oxide? All right, so for nitric oxide, I take Cardio Miracle. I've been taking it for six years. I take three scoops twice a day. I recommend you start with one scoop twice a day. Um, you, you may well get flushed, which is a niacin or vitamin B3 effect. But the, the cool thing is the, the flush goes away within a, a couple, yeah, within a minute or two. The dose of NMN that I take is 1,000 milligrams. I don't recommend you actually start at 1,000 milligrams. I would probably start at 500 milligrams and work up. Um, most people, including myself, see results within a week or two in terms and results, more energy, not needing as many naps. Um, talk about why NMN versus NAD, such as true niogen. Yeah, the problem with true niogen or even intravenous NAD is, well, intravenous, you, you'd have to do, you know, it's interesting, um, yeah, just taking niacin or vitamin B3 is not enough to get your NAD levels up. Um, from the studies I've seen, NMN will actually get your NAD levels up in your cell. You don't care about your NAD levels in your bloodstream. You care about your NAD levels in your cell. And NMN, there's a transporter. NMN gets transported into the cells and will raise your NAD levels there. Um, yeah. Glutathione supplements work great. Yeah, especially ones that are lipophilic. Uh, L-taurine is a new metformin. Uh, I, I'm a fan of both. Okay, what is my typical fasting protocol, frequency, duration, and guidelines? Again, this is so personalized. It's like saying, tell me what, what exercise protocol you use. Um, you know, or, or even, uh, yeah, so, but, but fasting, I mean, there's some people who only eat one meal a day. There's some people who, like in True North, there would be some people who would do a water fast for 10 days. Some people would do it for 20 days. Some people would do it for 40 days. Some people wanted to do it for 40 days, but could only do it for 10 days. So this is a very personalized thing. I, I can't really uh, give you a specific. Um, how, to, how to reduce arthritis or slow the progression. I can tell you anecdotally, I've seen many patients with arthritis 
uh, the pain go away on cardio miracle nitric oxide supplements. When it comes to arthritis, is what is the root cause? In many cases, it's inflammation from infections and toxins. If you can get the toxins and infections out, their symptoms get better. Um, let's see, eat plants. What about fruits? Yes, I'm a big fan of fruits. What about seeds? Let's talk about seeds for a minute. I'm okay with seeds in moderation. What do I mean by moderation? A handful, an ounce. I don't know about you, it's hard for me just to eat an ounce of seeds. So if you can't just eat an ounce of seeds, a handful of seeds or nuts, then I would keep it out of the house. But if you can, eat an ounce you know, a few times a day. All right. Um, I was told not to take berberine indefinitely. Um, I've, I've, for myself and other patients, seen good results on berberine indefinitely. So I'd be interested in any literature that you have about the long-term use. Um, okay. Some of those supplement drinks have a salt, acid salt fame, which is an artificial sweetener. Yes, you want to avoid artificial sweeteners like acid fame. Hey, I'll, um, Okay, we have one person here who's a fan of EES, and I'm a fan of EES, which is an energy center, but I'm not a fan of EES in general, which is a medical abbreviation for erythromycin, unless you have an infection. All right, didn't hear mention of artificial sweeteners, uh, Splenda, Genotoxic. Yes, I am not a fan of most artificial sweeteners. I'm okay with, with monk fruit. Uh, but yeah, but most artificial sweeteners, I don't recommend. Can't a fast just be not eating for 12 hours or for 14 hours overnight? Definitely. Yeah, that to me, that, that is intermittent fasting. Okay. How do I suggest dealing with Lyme, co-infections, parasites, and EBV? That would be a whole other um, lecture, but I'll just tell you in general terms, before you use antibiotics or anti- uh, essential oils or other products that will kill infections, is my opinion, you want to reduce the toxin level first, because as soon as you, as you kill Lyme, bus biofilm, you're going to reduce all these toxins, mold toxins, et cetera. So do a detox first, whether that's colonics, glutathione, which you can take intravenously if you're at a center. Um, but yeah, I, I can't really cover all of Lyme treatment in uh, right this second. Uh, I was told that once you start getting B12 injections, your body stops production of B12. Sure, I, I've heard that. And, and that's not just true of B12. With, with many of the nutrients, if you take more endogenously, your body may produce less. But um, I, I honestly don't care how you get B12, but make sure your levels are fine. Check your levels. My B12, B12 levels were very high, and it's because of MT, MTHFR. Um, yeah, and very high is, I, I don't, I wouldn't want your levels to be over 2000. Okay, let's see here. Make sure glass is made without toxins. It's, it's in, um, all right. I have not heard about the new supplement timeline. Yeah, shampoo, yeah, traditional shampoos and soaps are the worst. Um, I guess I can look up the timeline supplement because you got my interest now. Timeline supplement. There is a company called Timeline Nutrition that makes a supplement called Urolithin A or MitoPure. I am a fan of it. It is something called a postbiotic involving algaic acid that's produced in the gut. So yes, I am a fan of MitoPure. Uh, I'm upset that um, I, I used to get my MitoPure from uh, a company called, uh, or Urolithin A, a company called Do Not Age, and they took it off the market because they were being sued by um, Timeline Nutrition or, or similar companies. So but that, that's, that's a side topic. Does NAC affect hair loss? 
I'm not a, aware of it, but I, I can see how it, it would because NAC will will affect your toxin levels. And if 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 you if your NAC goes up, your glutathione goes up, you may do a better job re removing toxins, and that may help prevent hair loss. Um, I ask for a single nutrient dose in brands, please. So again, for nitric oxide, I recommend Cardio Miracle. And you can get that from cardiomiracle.com. And the discount code for me is Dr. Josh, D-R-J-O-S-H. For NMN, I recommend do not age.org. And the discount code uh, for that is again is Dr. Josh, D-R-J-O-S-H. I am so sick from intravenous NAD. Yeah, I'm not a fan of intravenous NAD. You have to go slowly. And I don't think intravenous NAD works as good as oral NMN. Okay, to what degree does fluoride toothpaste deplete nitric oxide? I, yeah, so here's, here's how it depletes it. F fluoride toothpaste and supplements and mouthwash will kill the um, normal bacteria on your mouth and the, the ones on your mouth and your tongue that produce nitric oxide, that fix, fix the nitrogen and produce nitric oxide. So, I would recommend staying away from fluoride products. Um, if you want to improve your nitric oxide production in your mouth, I would use a tongue scraper. That's been shown to in improve production of nitric oxide. Um, berberine is available in whole plant form as dried uh, berries, yes. Is allulose okay? Allulose, I think, is okay in small doses, in large doses. It can cause uh, what the industry likes to call anal leakage or diarrhea. So do not, a little bit of allulose is probably okay. Um, it's a non-traditional sugar. Uh, I would not take large doses of allulose. What about sauerkraut? Sauerkraut, I think is fine if you can make some that has low sodium. A lot of times they will add high doses of sodium, which I don't think is healthy. Uh, kombucha, I'm not a fan of because it has alcohol and alcohol is a toxin, uh, despite what the uh, alcoholic beverage industry wants to tell you. Autophagy does not happen until after 17 hours, according to doctors or documents. I agree with that. Um, I am a fan of bentonite clay as a binding agent that can, re can remove toxins, but I wouldn't take it uh, with any other supplements because it will just buy those supplements. Do you recommend against protein powders? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of protein powders, certainly not powders like whey that are from animal products because they cause cancer um, and they cause uh, the biologic clock to go in the wrong direction. So, and most people get plenty of protein in their diet, they're not deficient. So if you wanna know, you can get a blood test and measure your total protein level. If it's normal, which it probably will be, um, I wouldn't worry about supplementing protein, but despite the pressure in the media to supplement with, with protein. There's protein, if you're eating plants, there's plenty of uh, protein in plants by definition. If something is alive, it needs protein. Okay. Um, yeah, sucralose is not good. Stevia, um, if, you're, if you're eating the stevia plant, I think that's fine. If you're eating highly processed stevia, I'm not a, friend, a plan. I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, what about life extension supplements? I like life extension. Um, so yeah, I'm, they have some good supplements. Um, any suggestions to improve sleep? Yeah, so one of my favorites is, is taking lavender essential oil and Lang Lang essential oils. Lang Lang is spelled Y-L-A-N-G, Y-L-A-N-G. <clears throat> I've been giving my husband nitric oxide supplements and gum, and still he keeps losing it. Okay. Um. Do you know how long it takes our mouth to recover nitric oxide ability after a fluoride or being forced to rinse at the dentist? You know, it's, um, you're talking about the mouth microbiome and um, I think it depends what you're eating. 
if you're taking an oral probiotic, uh, but I would say probably recover within uh, a week or two or three. Uh, charcoal tooth powder, I am a fan of. Charcoal is a great binding agent. Um, yeah, Cardio Miracle is not a standalone. Correct. It's to me, it's an entourage. It's 50 different components that are designed to increase your levels of nitric oxide. Um, I am not aware of a single product nitric oxide that will last 24 to 36 hours. Arugula will not do it. Beets will not do it. Um, probiotics, I'm, I'm a fan of in general, but I just want to warn people that the whole probiotic industry research is a very new field. It's only been going on for about 10 years. So there's a lot of unknowns there. What is the best binding agent for mercury? Um, uh, in, in clinics, we've used like intravenous DMSA. Orally, I would do things like uh, wheatgrass juice, um, chlorella. Um, so there, there are many, many different ways you can uh, it, it bind up mercury. It depends what your mercury level is, is, is. I mean, if it's super, super toxic, um, you know, you'd use something like intravenous DMSA. All right. And these, these were some great questions. Um, I didn't go six hours, but, um, there are still some questions in the chat. Okay. Um, stevia and sucralose change the gut biome. Yes. And that's a good reason not to use them. What, which questions did I miss? Uh, coconut oil as an alternative to toothpaste, swishing. Oh, that is oil pulling. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I yes, I am a, a fan of oil pulling. I like um, the, um, the, there's some ones from doTERRA that I use, but yeah, whatever oil to, to me, though, make sure that the oil that you're pulling with is non-toxic. There's, there's a lot of toxic oils out there being sold to the public. Um, yeah. There's a comment here that coconut oil ingestion that this can throw off lab work because you can see clumping in the plasma upon a blood draw is one statement. Yeah, that, that's true. And here's the point. If you ingest coconut oil, like any type of oil, it gets absorbed in your body, goes to your bloodstream and causes your normally smooth biconcave red blood cells to get spikes then then can do damage to your blood vessels. So yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan normally of, of oil. Uh, there's a, a link in the chat to someone's website where they're going to load up the copy of this video. And so they'll be able to get that information. If you go back, I can't remember what the, I'll try to put it in again. But I also, Dr. Um, Joshua, I also wanted to ask about what were the treatments for mercury toxicity in the body? It, it kind of was DMSO or DMSA? No, 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 no. DMSA, there's... There's BAL, there's so many different, it, it really, it depends what your dose is. You know, if, if you have super high levels, I recommend uh, intravenous DMSA or a similar uh, lewisite IV, you know, go, go to an expert. If your levels are just a little bit high, then you could, could try binding agents or wheatgrass juice or, or things like that. So it, it, all, <laughs> it all depends on, on the dose we're talking about. Right, right. right. I mean, I mean, I mean, if you have a acute a acute exposure to mercury, no, don't do something besides take an oral supplement. <laughs> yeah, my husband went high on mercury after eating um, sushi a couple times a week and doing Trader Joe's fish, and then they had a lot of warnings about Trader Joe's fish about it. But right. he, yeah, so. right, yeah, and, and that's that's not just Trader Joe's. I mean, the 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 whole world's. Um, fish in water supply is polluted with heavy metals, uh, right. regardless of the source. So if you're eating a lot of fish, you probably have heavy metals. It may not be mercury, it might be cadmium, it may be arsenic, it may be other heavy metals. So yeah, so. 
that was my concern about the whole um, eating uh, the, all these fish oils and they say cold water fish. So the fish oils can be contaminated unless you're doing krill, which is really expensive and hard to get. But then there's also the fish oils of, um, of that are heat processed. So if you're heat processing these fish oils, are they even worth taking. And if you're heating up fish to high levels, then it's transforming those oils in the fish. So is it even a good source? And then the other part of that is in the Townsend newsletter, they had a complete vegetarian source of getting your omegas. And I, I haven't been able to find it, but it's like a mixture of avocado oil. And so what is your, what are your thoughts on the, what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I agree in general that, um, and there's a question here, should you stop eating fish? I, I would recommend stopping. Uh, fish is not a health food. You know, maybe 100 years ago, it didn't have all these toxins. But if you're eating fish today, you're getting high levels of PCBs and, and um, these other uh, toxins. And if you're eating fish oils, the, the devil's on the details, right? Is, is this company that's taking fish and making oil out of it, unless they're doing a really good job of filtering out all the toxins and not producing oxidized fats that are toxic. Uh, that, that's why for me, I, I uh, get my omegas from al algae oil um, type products. Right, do you, a, do you have a um, company on that, the algae oil products? Um, Can you put it on your website and I'll look there later? Yeah, or? yeah. It, it may be there. The, the one I use is called IWI is the brand name. And they have many different, um, yeah, but the company is called IWI. I think they actually might be European, uh, that company. And the, the product that I take is EPA only. I think it's controversial. Do you want EPA? Do you want DHA? And I, I don't want to go through that con controversy right now, but I think the safest place to get your omega threes is as a supplement is going to be through algae. But, but even yeah. so, wherever you get it from, you want to make sure that they're testing it for toxins. Heavy metals, well, like that. Yeah, even chia seeds, I guess you would have to make sure um, that they're tested. Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can say Nordic Naturals. I know the guy, one of the guys who owns that knows, kind of knows the knows the people that run Nordic Naturals, and they're out of Moss Beach or down near Monterey. So okay. they're taking fish out of the oceans near us, which are not completely clear and clean. So the Nordic Naturals are really suspicious to me. And then the other part of it is that the fish that are being a, a, a fact I've seen maybe pro public or something but the fish that are caught in alaska are being mm -hmm. transported to china for processing and we don't know that the food fish that's coming back here are actually the fish that were wild caught in china I, I mean in alaska that you know this whole triangle of processing that's coming back to the u.s so that might have been a problem yeah. with some of the contaminations yeah. here and whether there's GMO fish that I, and that's maybe conspiracy theory, but I kind of question all that. No, no, I, I think you should question the food, your food supply and the supplements you put in your body. Someone's asking about cod liver oil. You may have taken it as a, as a child. If you're taking it now, I, I think it's toxic, uh, unless proven otherwise, both with, with, um, PCBs and for, you know, forever chemicals and um, with heavy metals. What about hair analysis versus blood analysis for toxins? Hair analysis will give you further back in time what you can look back like six months, whereas a blood analysis will tell you right now today what, at that time, what heavy metals are in your uh, bloodstream. And if you're concerned, you know, you may want to do both. Wow. Well, this, this has been, this, I, I appreciate everyone's uh, attention and um, yeah, this is, I like this group, so. And somebody's asking in chat about dairy products. And I also wanted to ask about American um, ginseng, which is highly valued in Asia. And then um, do you have any opinions on that? Yeah, I don't know anything about that, but I can tell you dairy products you wanna stay away from 
Um, for many reasons, number one, they're normally very inflammatory. Number two, they normally, because they're animal products, have high levels of toxins. So yeah, I'm not a fan of dairy products, but I can tell you from personal experience, the hardest thing for me to give up dairy-wise was cheese because there are actually morphine type compounds, narcotic compounds in the dairy products that you're addicted to. So once you cut that off, you're going to go through with withdrawal symptoms. But yeah, dairy um, uh, is not something you want to be taking as an adult. Uh, sunflower oil is pro-inflammatory, but so is every oil. My point is, if you take in an oil, it causes your red blood cells to develop spikes. Those spikes then damage the endothelium of your blood vessels, and that causes inflammation. Um, so instead of flax oil, why not just eat some ground flax seeds? I'm a fan of that. All right. Yeah, dairy products trigger the production of mucus and they trigger your, your immune system. No question. Congestion. Are nut butters better than oil? I think they are in general, but nut butters are, are still very calorie dense. So they should not be a staple you're eating every day. Um, love ground flax seeds. Yeah, that's awesome. Aren't seeds trying to kill us? No, I don't think so. But if you eat too many seeds, it will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Joshua, there's this whole thing with Dr. Gundry that the whole, um, what do they call them, lectins on the outside of grains and beans and maybe lectins or some kind of coating on the outside of seeds might be what they're talking about because the lectins are really supposed to be protecting the seed or whatever and damages um, some of our intestinal system or causes inflammation. Do you know much? I don't know a whole lot about it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Dr. Gundry has done very well as a public speaker, as an author. I don't agree with a lot of what he says, but um, he's a great marketer. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid about lectins in general. Um, I mean, if you're going to eat beans, cook them. That will destroy a lot of lectins. Now, there are there definitely are some people who are sensitive to nightshades. And if you're one of those people, you shouldn't eat nightshades. And you probably will learn about, you know, nightshades like eggplant. But um, that's a whole other discussion. It seems like the hardest thing is for people to get off nightshades to test themselves and then get back on and see what they do to themselves. Yes. That, that, that's true. And, and we definitely saw that with when people water fasted. Um, organic eggs, yeah, I'm not a fan of eggs, organic or otherwise, because even organic eggs are not grown in a sterile environment. And because of that, they have bacteria that produce endotoxin. And that endotoxin gets concentrated into the egg. And then if you eat the egg, you're, 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 you're taking the toxins. So yeah, organic eggs, despite the advertising from the egg board, is not a health food, in my opinion. Um, my dad had psoriasis and it was from eggs and oils. Yes, common scenario. Uh, under the root cause can be inflammation and, and infection and toxins. Um, eggs are exempt from pesticides, I wish. <laughs> eggs are fatty and they will concentrate pesticides. Have you read the China study? My, my mother-in-law is really a big fan of the China study. Yeah, no, I... I a long time ago, it's, it's been, yeah, it, but yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'm a fan of the China study, definitely. You've been a wealth of information. It's like, I'd love to oh, well, see you I, again. I, thank you. I've, I've, been, I've been lecturing on this for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. So, and, and I love this and, you know, I, it helped me and I'm trying to help everyone else. And you can definitely find lectures on the, you know, the benefits of plants. I have not found a lot yet, a lot of um, lectures who combine that with uh, longevity. But um, I think the more the merrier. Yeah. Do you do peptide therapy? Yeah, in the right setting. I'm a fan of peptides and exosomes to reverse dementia. Um, yeah, it, it works. Uh, but it is not FDA approved, so it's a investigational 
treatment. Um, chickens and turkeys are given antibiotics. Yes, you don't. That's one reason why you don't want to be eating animal products is getting their antibiotic exposure. All right, so I guess we've been going for a couple hours, not six hours, but um, this was fun. Right. <laughs> and uh, again, if you want to reach out, my website, drjosh.com, D-R-G-O-S-H. Or have a, have a good evening or uh, afternoon or... So what is left to eat? What you should be eating are fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and uh, less, less processed food. And, but don't, don't feel bad if you don't make the transition all in one day. Take your time. Do what's right for you. Okay. I want to thank you very much. Um, you know, we can do further questions, but our next meeting will be July 10th at noon California time. And it will be on the gut and treatment of COVID and long COVID. But in the description, we're going to kind of leave out the COVID, the C word, because that tends to get people censored. But that will be the focus. But we won't be, we'll be using some other words other than the C word. And that's, that's an important topic because obviously there are uh, many people who still don't, have not recovered their sense of smell or taste. Um, yeah. I yeah, still so feel that will be our next meeting. And if you have any further questions, feel free to ask. And we will post this on our website, www.s is in Sally, V is in Victor, H is in Health, I is in Institute. And when I edit it, that will be on our website, along with our other videos. Uh, some of the ones that are likely to be censored, I don't put there. Uh, the website, again, I'm going to post it right now. Silicon Valley Health Institute. If you want to be on our email list, uh, so you can be directly notified with a meetup group, you can do it through there. You can go to a website and, you know, get on the list through there. You can direct message me or anything you put on the website will come to me anyway. Right. Uh, email us, do it any way you like. Meetup. You know, 